We are here on Metalopolis Game 2 between Huck, Pinder, a PvP matchup. And uh, Game 1, we just saw Unless Temple. Uh, we saw a fast expand build from Pinder, but Huck uh, really did not even know that the fast expand was there. He just opted for a timing push with those two Immortals, and Pinder really had no answer from that. Some great force fields from Huck forced Pinder into some poor situations, and Huck just pretty much steamrolled his opponent. And now on Metalopolis, a, a map that favors somewhat long game. So what do you think about <laughs> PvP on this match? Oh my god. Well, first of all, n I bet you Pinder is not going to be happy about these positions. Look at Huck spawning. In the top position is the red Protoss, and as usual, Huck just clicks that rally point like crazy. I hope we get to see that in the camera. Look at him just rallying everywhere. One of his trademark moves. Uh, and Pinder spawning here at the left is the green Protoss. Uh, and, you know, I'm certain Pinder chose Metalopolis because we already saw he's comfortable doing these very fast expansion style plays in Protoss vs. Protoss from game one. Metalopolis, a very large map, except when you get these sorts of horizontal positions, left versus top. Extremely close, going to have to be a much, much, much more um, uh, strong defense in order to stay alive early on. And we see the Huck, uh, actually both players, sending out an extremely early pro. Penders is going to be get arriving just a little bit sooner, and already Penders realizing it's going to be yet another close, intense game. So I'm very curious to see if Penders is going to just stick to his guns, expand the way he did in game one, or whether he's going to try to rely on just a more typical play. Yeah, really, APM, uh, talking about APM a little bit more, is a stat that kind of just gets thrown around. That doesn't mean too, too much. But uh, Pender impressing me is he was averaging about 430 there with the spam uh, in the beginning of the game. And right now he's sitting about 350. So that is quite high for any StarCraft player, especially here in StarCraft 2. We do have uh, Pender uh, being a little bit of a pain in Huck's side right now as he is uh, going to be on that pylon in his base. And we do have Huck's probe doing a little bit of a harassment on uh, his opponent's pylon as well. Yeah, it looks like no gas stealing going down quite yet. You know, it's kind of funny that comment about the APM, because when you do get nervous, you tend to just spam with your fingers. Uh, you know, what you think is the reasonable pace, but is like eight times faster than normal. Which brings me back to my first ever live tournament in Chicago, where after, or actually during game one, I was so nervous that I played at 450 APM and sweat was actually pooling on my nose. And all the other Counter-Strike players were judging me silently. But fortunately, you know, your nerves improve themselves over time. It looks like Pinder, since he's in game two, has much more comfort. Always good to get the first game out of the way. We used to have Cybernetics Core going down for Pinder. No second gas down for either player. Pinder is getting that Cybernetics Core up quite a bit earlier than Huck, but Huck is well known to be a player who favors getting many, many probes up um, instead of teching quickly. And we can already see that reflected in the food counts. Second gas going down for Huck. And second gateway going down for Pinder. Wow, not going for gas early. And yeah, we do have uh, Pinder getting that second gateway, just like you did say. Uh, the harvester count is about equal. We have Huck now with one more harvester, or two more harvesters, as uh, this one will put uh, Pinder back behind one. We do have um, Pinder getting that warp gate research, as well as getting his first stalker out. And look at that probe from Huck uh, being annoying once again, as it does have that <laughs> pylon down to about 130 HP of Pinder's. And going back into uh, Huck's base, Pinder's probe is just kind of sitting there, chilling out, having a uh, drink there in uh, Huck's base. We do have that first stalker coming off for Huck as well as that uh, warp gate research starting. Yeah, Jesus, that probe killed 300 hit points. Maybe this is why Huck favors getting probes so early. If your opponent doesn't pay attention, you can always lose that pylon. Like, seriously, that's, that's something that's kind of funny to see that that pylon is that weak, but a lot of players just completely ignore the early attacking worker. I, I know that there's a lot of Terran players who love attacking that early pylon and can often take it out if they combine it with early Marauder pressure. But either way, Huck looks like he's going to be doing an almost identical play to last game, getting that robotics facility up super fast and a second gateway up. And here comes Pender favoring more early stalkers and hasn't taken any guys out of gas. Is going for a very fast warp gate chrono boosting right there. And it looks like it's going to be another early expo. I'm going to love to see this. And ooh, Huck with the blunder with the stalker moving too far forward. And the probe gets up the main. Ooh, man, I'm not sure. That's one of the weirdest trade-offs I've ever seen. Oh, and look, Huck's probe gets in and just starts attacking a building. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, he Back really wanted forward. to kill that. He's upset he retreated, man. He's definitely starting to work on that uh, pylon. We do have those warp gates coming in for Pinder, and there's the Nexus now going down at his natural expansion. 
And with that robo robotics facility up for Huck, it has not started uh, making an Immortal yet. Uh, wondering if he's going to be going for a Colossus build here. We do have a pylon now at the bottom of Huck's base. I don't think that's actually going to be hiding any tech that might just be to uh, allow him to warp some units out mm -hmm. there if he so decides. But uh, we do have Pinder getting up his uh, expansion. And there comes the first Immortal from Huck right now. This might just be exactly like we saw in game one, as Huck might just start powering units here. Yeah, and oh, look at this great adjustment by Pinder, favoring getting two more warp gates immediately. Huck clearly going for the kill right away. Look at this. Once he saw that expansion going down with that probe that miraculously got into his opponent's face, he is immediately adding a third gateway, immediately chrono boosting an immortal. And look, a robotics bay going down as well. Huck definitely going for the power one base strategy. And look at this, Pender chrono boosting his gateways, trying to get as many units out as he can. Only he starts uh, with stalkers because they're so fast they can snipe off any incoming scouts, but then he has to start making zealots and sentries because they're cheap, they're fast, and they're the only units that can really hope to stand alive against immortals. We do have a robotics facility going down for Pender now in his main bases. He is also on four gates as those two new uh, gates are going to be make morphing into warp gates. Wow, as I stumble there saying gates about 700 times in about two <laughs> seconds. But uh, we do have Huck now out with that second immortal in his base. Are we going to see a timing push just like we saw last game from Huck? He does have all of his units selected. He might just be hot keying him there and possibly waiting. Oh, wow, a warp prism coming from wow. the robotics facility. And also getting the Gravitic Drive. I believe that is the speed upgrade for Warp Prisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, that's an extremely unusual strategy by Huck. I, like, 99 times out of 100, and 100 times out of 100 when I'm casting, I would say that this is an early timing push. Three Warp Gates, one Robotics Facility, getting that Robotics Bay, clearly going to be Colossus, but of course... Sometimes you can be 100% certain of something and be wrong. Looks like he's going for that immortal drop. Always effective. Pinder is going to be spread out. Pinder cannot afford to make a lot of stalkers because the immortals kill them so fast. The only units that are really going to be able to do a lot of damage um, to this warp prism is actually going to be the zealots because the zealots um, are the units that can kill the immortals the fastest. But of course, these zealots are so slow that, I mean, it just is a nightmare to deal with these Warp Prison drops unless you have lots and lots of units. And unfortunately, Pender does seem to have that. Huck feels like he can't quite pierce in there. It looks like he's going to back off. Very weird game right now. Pender starting to make more and more Stalkers since he's gotten that expansion up. Huck needs to do a lot of damage here or else it's going to be lights out for him. But it looks like he's just pulling back to regroup. This is such a weird opening. And we do have that Colossus now for Huck about to warp in. I believe that Huck saw that uh, assimilator there of Pinders at his natural expansion and decided I'm going to go all the way around into the back of your base. I'm not sure if Pinder actually spotted it, but oh, this pro might be seeing this warp prism there. Is he going to see it going into the player cram? Oh, and he does see it briefly, but I'm not sure if he's going to react to it. He does have a, he does split his forces, and he does also, there goes uh, Huck dropping those immortals in the base that it's going to drop out his pylon, that it's going to also put Pinder behind, and here comes a fight between Huck and Pinder. He does have, uh, Pinder is focusing that Colossus, some nice force builds there, completely walling off all of the zealots of Pinder, and now these two immortals inside of Pinder's base have begun uh, attacking on one of uh, Pinder's warp gates. And this is exactly the problem that uh, we were talking about before. The Stalkers are the only thing that can really kill the Warp Prism quickly, but the Zealots are the only things that can stay alive against the uh, Immortals. And oh no, look at this! Oh, Force Fielded! Oh my god, that's going to be huge! Pinder has to warp in as many units as he can. Look at all the Zealots that are caught off guard, but Pinder just has so many units. He was chrono boosting all those Warp Gates constantly throughout that entire attack. And that one Colossus is doing huge damage to those Zealots. Look at the amount of pain those Zealots are under. All of them already getting ripped apart. That Colossus, uh-oh, getting a little over-eager moving forward. Pinder's now moving forward with his probes to try to do some damage, warping in more Zealots to the front lines, and the Immortals are also coming down to the front too, but they haven't quite been able to target fire up against those Stalkers, and Huck is getting way ahead in food. Those force fields were just pivotal against those Zealots, and Pinder's rapidly trying to rebuild, but I do not know if it will be enough. That Colossus is just doing way too much damage, and there Huck using the Warp Prism as well to warp in more Zealots of his own. Seriously bad situation for Pender. Yeah, Pender is going to say GG there. It was pretty much over. There was just too much to handle from Huck. So another quick game here on Metalopolis between Huck and Pender. Now Huck up 2-0 over Pender as we go into Desert Oasis, a map that sometimes you tend to see some cheese on. We'll have to see exactly how these two players decide to play.